I think that's a line of crap. <laughs> ha! All right. So thanks, everybody, for coming. What a great turnout. Really, really is. Thanks, Kim, Doug, Adam, everybody behind the scenes that put this together. It's all free. Can't beat them. Okay. So 20-some years ago, I started my two-handed journey. I started and stopped it. There were none of these short lines and everything else, but I'm not a caster. My casts are not the best, but I'm a fishing guide like Kevin. Where our loops sometimes are not the best. Sometimes we get tangles just like you. We're just normal guys. But we know what to do with the fly when it hits the water. That's the secret to the fishing part of all this. But today, during the course of the little time I've had at the tent meeting everybody and chatting, I had a couple bullet points I want to touch before we go out to the water. And the first thing is that, depending if you have a switch rod or a two-handed rod, the hard part as an angler is that because the rod does not know if you're using one hand or two hands, top hand or bottom hand. It doesn't know. But what it knows is it likes to be accelerate to a positive stop, just like a single hand rod. And when you start out on your swinging journey and your casting journeys, there's gonna be a learning curve, especially if you have been a, a long time single hand caster, because you're gonna have the tendency to want to push with the top, right? You're gonna push like crazy. The problem is, is that, let's just look at the grip first, is that the grip on all two-handed rods is a loose grip on top. Why do you think everybody wants a tendency to grab this and just kill the rod? That's great if you're going to spay a rama like Adam and casting 150 feet, but in the fishing world, when we're using Skagit lines, which are the most fishiest lines for the Great Lakes area, not that you can't use Scandi, but generally speaking, like Kevin said, we use Skagit lines. Bottom hand, I'm a right hand dominant caster. My bottom hand left, make an L, and you put it in this little ball right here. The top hand, everybody's gonna to wanna to use a traditional thumb on top. And this top hand is nothing more to guide the rod up or down. That's all it does. And to stop the rod. And if you're a really good caster, the stop comes from the bottom hand. Also, if you use your top hand and you squeeze tightly by holding running line there, the rod action stops right there. You're not utilizing the full flex of the rod deeply into the butt section. So get in, get in the habit to grab loosely on top and a little ring grip on the bottom and things will approach. And there's different rods. If you're casting a 15 foot or a 14 foot rod with big long lines, the grip is different, but we're fishing. This is what the fish talk about fishing. The next is we'll talk a little bit. Kevin talked about the sink tips you guys use around here. But in general rule of thumb, when you're choosing a sink tip, the ratio is eight and 10 foot tips for rods 11 foot and 12 foot and under in that range, switch rods and that. If you have a single hand rod, you're probably gonna to wanna to use an eight foot sinking leader. It's a ratio of the stroke is what we're looking for. To repeat this time and time again, but a lot of times as a beginner when we first start out, we struggle a little bit. We're never really getting into the key position. So when we go out there, I'm gonna go out on the water and we're gonna talk a little bit about fishing casts and then casting casts and the expectations of what you can really do with the rod and how the rod and the angle of the cast determines. The guys that covered the boat fishing, this is gonna be more wade fishing. So I wade a lot all over. I don't, I mean, I wade the muskegon, but of course it's more successful out of a boat, but there are anglers that wade fish this. So let's talk about it. So we're gonna go down to the river and 
What's the first thing? I'm going to give you three letters to go fishing at all times. The first is going to be W, wind. We fight it no matter what. We spend thousands of dollars to go fishing on a destination trip, and I guarantee it's going to blow 30 miles an hour and die. We're all like, ah, tangles, knots, everything else. But so we have to consider the wind and what, do, what side of the body, like the guys on the boat, Kim and Doug said, they just got to fight it. But when you're shorebound or waiting, we always want to make our forward stroke downwind and our fly downwind of us so we don't catch ourselves. So the first letter is W. All right, it's sort of like the guy said, it's swirling around, it's blowing a little bit upriver, then it swirls around, so you have to sort of play that. So think of W as the first one. So I'm walking down the river. The next is going to be, like here we're pretty blessed. We've got zero canopy overdrop. We don't have any trees, but the next letter is B for backdrop. Believe it or not, when we're fishing, there are certain casts and certain movements that we can make to allow you to have a shallower D loop rather than a bigger D loop. Basically, we, if I'm up against the weeds and I got to make a cast, I'm going to perform a cast where my D loop doesn't get stuck in the weeds. And like Doug and I said, if I'm working under a canopy of trees, we're just going to bastardize some camo cast under the trees and hack it out there. Does it look pretty? Who the heck cares? I'm not on the front of a catalog. We're going fishing, trying to get the fly out there. And once it gets out there, we get it the men and get it down there where the fish are. So we weren't concerned about that. So don't ever worry about what your casts look like. Worry about getting the rod comfortable, getting to know your rod, and just get it out there, go fishing. The rest will come into play. So backdrop, that's the backdrop that we've got. Pretty much don't have to worry about it. We got all sorts of room. If we're on that side of the river, might be an issue with more trees. The next is gonna be T. As you see, as I set up, fishing is a game of angle. T is the target. The target when you're wade fishing is not the fish. The target is the direction of the cast, and we always have to face our target when we go to cast. That's what puts the target at the fit where we're gonna cast. So the target is where I need to position the fly, how far upstream or how far of an angle towards the fish can I get away with and how shallow of a water it is. If you want a soaky fly, you gotta throw farther upstream. And there's a few things we'll talk a little bit about. So I'm going down to the river now, and we're gonna go fishing. And oh boy, there's some, there's some fish out there, the little green buoy. 